welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about ion torrent sequencing which is also known as ion proton sequencing and it is from live technologies it's a new mode of DNA sequencing technology the higher end next generation DNA sequencing technology that is incredibly fast and it is much uh, the most important advantage is the speed and also it is very reliable the data that we get it's very very reliable even compared with Illumina sequencing that we know of. so let's talk about it so here will be ion torrent sequencing okay so what does this thing mean and what is this ion torrent sequencing if you look at this name there is something ions to deal with this right and ion means here we are talking about protons that is hydrogen ions now the idea of this DNA sequencing is just like any other next generation sequencing you know in next generation sequencing what we do we have the genome sequence we fragmentize the sequence into smaller parts once we fragmentize the sequence into small fragments then we put them and attach adapters in both the ends upon addition of adapters we amplify those fragment of DNA sequences and we attach them in beads you know there are different in, insoluble beads are there where we attach the DNA sequence so once we have bead filled beads filled with the DNA sequence then we take each of the sequence we have a single standard DNA and then we use uh, new deoxynucleotide sequences uh, to attach one after another to know the opposite uh, sequence of the strand which is the actual target DNA to be sequenced now same thing will happen here in case of ion torrent but in this case it will rely on release of proton ion release of hydrogen ion every time a nucleotide sequence is added this is the chemical point of view of this whole process you know if you look at a growing chain of nucleotide sequences if you look at a growing chain it has a 3 prime hydroxyl group 3 to react and if another 3 phosphate group containing base will come and what happens actually this hydroxyl group it will interact and attack the alpha phosphate so two phosphate groups released as pyrophosphate and they form a bond between between each other the bond is known as phosphodiester bond now once this process is going on this is the polymerization stage once this process is going on it will release proton it will release hydrogen ion right in ion torrent sequencing we detect the generation of this hydrogen ions okay this is the basic chemical overview now how this whole process is conducted now as you know we have the DNA let's say this is uh, say the whole genomic DNA we are talking about it's a big uh, part of the DNA so what we do here we'll fragmentize this DNA okay fragmentation so the DNA is fragmented into small parts one small part of the DNA is produced okay double standard DNA all of them then what will you do you simply add some adapter sequences at both the ends why we need adapters because this adapter sequence I'm telling you in a moment why you need them you know right after adding the adapter we want this DNA sequences to be added and attached to beads okay insoluble molecules okay let's draw the beads here say this is a bead and what happens actually our beads containing a specific type of single standard DNA sequence all around see single standard DNA sequence attached to the beads we, we synthesize them and we prepare it in the kit in the sequencing kit then what we do here in this case you know the sequence that are placed in the bead we know right because we designed it so we prepare the complementary sequence of this bead as adapter okay now we make all this DNA single stranded okay the, the DNA that we prepare they will be single stranded DNA okay single strand so now as we know this section of the adapter is complementary to the DNA that is present in the bead it can easily go and bind right so if I let you know the binding it will be like this isn't it 
by this way many the, of those sequence will will go and bind all the sequences they will go and bind okay and let me draw all the complementary dna sequence that will help them to bind right this is how all the fraction dna will bind and attach to the beads because of this complementary feature that's why we need to add the adapter so this is a very common process for all the type of next generation sequencing so once the bead is produced now these beads are placed in tiny wells okay and the well format that is also created in the lab is known as microchip okay it's just like the semiconductor chip that we find in most of our electronic appliances today in your digital camera also you will see small and small chip okay a very small chip uh, even the dimension of 1 to 2 inch uh, 1 and a half inch uh, in the dim uh, 1 and a half inch uh, square inch this is very small right so those small chip everything is accommodated in that chip so what we do in in, in uh, the semiconductor technology there are small fractions the chips which are divided into millions and even billions of small pixels where your digital camera records the light data okay once they record the light data they will conduct the data in form of binary that is one and zero so that the camera will understand which part gets better brighter light which part gets uh, slower uh, I mean uh, darker light and that's how the image is constructed now in this case the same technology but here we don't rely on the light here instead of each of the pixels we create that pixel as wells you know wells wells are small grooves very tiny grooves and in this semiconductor chip in the chip of iron torrent sequencing in this case each of those chip consisting of millions and billions of small wells and each of the wells are recruited for applying these beads onto them so if i draw the chip very well if you look at here like this and this is divided and further divided if you take this and it further divided in very tiny fraction and each of the fractions are known as wells now these wells are allotted for the beads to present so beads are accompanying one well each of the beads are present in one well so we load it we load those beads into the wells actually uh, so so those beads are loaded into the wells and you know not only the beads but also along with the beads we have all the dna sequences also added coming out of the beads right just like this let's see we add these things in each of the wells and there are millions of wells even billions of wells containing all the fractions so you can imagine that a dna sequence however long it is you can fractionate it you can break it down you can load them into the beads attach them into the beads and you can put them uh, inside these wells okay it does not matter because the wells have enormous capability of holding dna uh, in, uh, attached with beads so once this thing is done once we add everything into these wells now this is the chip right this chip is the heart of iron torrent sequencing once the chip is ready once everything is loaded into the wells this is the loaded chip now this chip is uh, have uh, this chip has another layer of design and that is a secondary layer right after the chip if i draw it as a cross section view you will see this is the chip this is the chip okay and right next to this chip there is another layer this is this is known as the iron sensitive layer iron sensitive layer which is created also now this layer can detect the presence of positively charged ion which is here the protons which is here the hydrogen ions this is the iron sensitive layer just like your camera right after the chip there is a sensor CCD sensor or CMOS sensor here we have the ion sensitive layer now the idea is we add all these things we add this chip chip is loaded now right after the loadage of chip we start adding the nucleotide sequences one after another okay so everything is placed this is now the time to run the sequencing because this is the preparation phase okay we multiply we break this DNA down we multiply it uh, you even sometimes need amplification uh, PCR amplification to get uh, to to take each of the fragments 
as much as you can to run because you know the more you run uh, this DNA fragments as uh, whole sequencing through whole sequencing the more accurate data you will get okay because if you run only once to check the error rate will be higher if you if you run thousand times and you need to uh, take all the data and you need to figure out what's exactly there it will be more accurate so here what once after loading we we start the sequencing now the sequencing process works like this okay the sequencing begins with each nucleotide sequences one nucleotide sequence at a time we don't know what exactly the sequence is that's what we want to do that's what we want to find out so the idea we know is that there are four different bases present in the dna adenine guanine thymine and cytosine right four different bases are present so what we can do we can run this whole sequencer for each of those nucleotide sequences one at a time okay so let's say at the very beginning we start with only adenine okay we check for only adenine so what we do we add add DATP deoxy adenosine ribonucleotide uh, triphosphate so once we add DATP wherever there is the complementary signal T this adenine will bind okay and wherever it is something else it will not bind so let's say here it's T, so the adenine will go and pair, right? Adenine go and pair. That's the complementary base pairing. The easy stuff always. So whenever, whenever a nucleotide is attached, right? Whenever adenine is attached to the growing chain here, through this adapter, the growing chain, at that time, it will release one molecule of hydrogen ion. For each attachment of nucleotide it will release one molecule of hydrogen ion so release of one molecule of hydrogen ion one hydrogen ion is released for a and that is sensed by the ion sensitive layer they can sense it okay how and the question is how because you know this whole process is running in all the wells it does not matter this it's occurring only at one well let's say this one but this thing is occurring everywhere because we add this adenine DATP in every in this whole chip we load it in the whole wells so wherever they find adenine they will pair it doesn't matter wherever they find they will pair so wherever they bind they will pair and after this pairing they will get the signal in form of hydrogen ion but here the ion sensitive layer can detect the pH of the solution because you know hydrogen ion influence pH so if hydrogen ion is re released the pH of the solution will change the pH of the chambers will change right it will drop the pH will go down so here whenever a proper binding is done hydrogen released hydrogen ion released and the pH drops so the change in pH is monitored okay and the altitude at which the change in pH is occurring is also monitored okay now let's say there are consecutive 2t consecutive t's are present say so 3t consecutive 3 adenines will be added so 3 hydrogen ions will be generated so the ph change will be more right and each time the ph change occurs they count it this this ion sensitive layer count it as a base call it's known as a base call that is we add we are checking for base a whenever we find the ph change that means we get a base call that means that base is present definitely so by this way base call is recorded every time okay and because this sensitive layer at the end if you look at the structure of the machine it is added ultimately to the to the cpu the, the processing unit which is getting all the data which is making everything the so it's, it's ultimately, if you, if you think it, it's ultimately as a pH meter. Every day of the small tiny wells are nothing but tiny pH meters. So this chip is entirely millions and millions of pH meter combined together. They are functioning together. Whenever this uh, recognition is occurring, base call is recorded and that data is in uh, the CPU. The CPU gets the data. It is telling us yes this base is present now once three a's are attached so obviously three t's are present in the actual strand which we want to synthesize now by this way 
we can get the data of the whole genome sequence in each of those fragments. Then CPU runs complex algorithm to figure it out, uh, align them together to get the full data. Now the major advantage of ion torrent sequencing is that you know however big uh, your genome is, you can run it almost once because you know it's the chip is enormous capability. Now we have a chip of 100 GB capability. We started with 10 MB and this capability is increasing because it's, it's the scaling up of this, of this chip is also very easy. I mean, it's, it's also very interesting. So that's why the scaling up is going on. We started with 10 MB, now we have 100 GB capability chip which can run billions of DNA fragments altogether. So what it does actually, it minimizes the time dramatically compared with the other next generation sequencing, even compared with Illumina sequencing. In next generation sequencing, it will take almost 30 hours to 48 hours even uh, for a sequencers to get a large DNA sequence uh, sequenced. But in this case, it will only take two to three hours. So it's, it's incredibly fast and it's also accurate because it's running everything at the same go. And as it's running everything at the same time, you, you need only one chip to run that process. It is not uh, very much complex that every time you need to do this stuff and, and like not like that. It is uh, again compared to that, uh, though it's ex expensive, but it's not that much uh, if you think of uh, the cost time that is providing. In three hours, you can spend that money uh, to sequence the genome. Now, as I told you, for each of the time, it will run for one nucleotide at a time. So once it's run for A, then it will wash off rest of the A once all this process is done. Then it will go for the G and the same process. Then it will go for the T, then wash off, same process for the C, wash off. This is how the whole thing is done. No fluorescence, nothing else required, very clean job. And this is very, very important, okay? So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, and definitely subscribe to my channel. The links are provided here, subscription links, as well as in the top and the bottom. Uh, thank you.